Hey, old Treebeard here, and we're here to talk and look at Horsewomen 3, The Horsewomening. Actually, that'd probably be a better title. No, this is Equestria Girls 3, The Friendship Games. Wait, there was so, a Friendship Games in this movie? I, I, I didn't even notice. It was probably no, there, not there. Apparent, <laughs> well, there were games and there was friendship, but I'm not sure the two were related. Hmm. Joining me tonight are Greg Diggity Dug Dig Diggity Dug. Pony Girls on Motorcycles. And TGYG BGYR.5. I I think there were a lot more letters in there than I usually have. Ye. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is the third Equestria Girls movie. So, what what did we think? Uh, Greg, what did you think of Horsewomen 3, the Horsewomening? Greg, wake the fuck oh, up! Oh, what? Oh, I was watching Equestria Girls Free. What, what was that? What did you think of the movie you slept through? <laughs> Alright, so yeah, if that wasn't enough of an indication, holy shit. Look, looking back, god, this is a boring movie. Nothing happens. It's so meh. Like, really, we were promised like these friendship games. They they end up happening for a what nine minutes out of a seventy minute movie. Um, we were promised the development of Sai Twai. It, she's barely developed at all. Um, like really, nothing happens, and it's, it's so boring. Even the villain sucks. Like the last two movies we had. A demon pony girl and the uh yeah, the sirens were the sirens were great in Rainbow Rocks. And Sunset Shimmer, at least in the first pony movie, her her demon design, it's pretty cool. Not the best villain ever, but decent. Here we have Bitchy Principal Lady. Oh, okay. That's really exciting. Look at her be a bitch about other schools excelling. Oh man, it's Principal Maleficent with the <laughs> reference to To Kill a Mockingbird yeah. that doesn't make What's any the sense. deal with that? Really? If the Atticus Finch reference? I, I'm. Did someone on the staff just really like reading To Kill a Mockingbird and we're like, yeah, that'll do. I don't I don't want to put any further thought into what to name this villain, per se. Yeah, seriously. I mean, Unless I see her defending a black man in court, doesn't count. <laughs> But, yeah, what's this lady's deal, really? Like, what's her deal? There is being a bitchy, like, typical movie villain, and then there's this lady. Like, what What the fuck? <laughs> what principle operates like this? Like, oh, I, I see the test scores are rising over at Canterlot High. This cannot happen. Oh, we must smack them down into the oh, dirt where they belong. We must sabotage them, yes. And apparently she's also the emperor now, but, I mean, she kind of spins around her <laughs> chair <laughs> initially. <laughs> Everything is proceeding exactly as I have foreseen. Good. Which is why you are in detention. Let the anger towards Canterlot High flow through you, yes. <laughs> Strike down, Sunset Shimmer, and take your place by my side, Twilight Sparkle. <laughs> Do it. But, uh, Open the box and your journey to the dark side will be complete. <laughs> she even does kind of like tempt him. Like, yeah, open that magic compass. Do it. Do it Jeez. now. <laughs> God, I wish the Emperor there is was a movie. In the way. Yeah, can we? Could we have had the Emperor in this movie instead? That would have been so much <laughs> like, better. We need to dump over. Oh my God! Yeah, Jeez. silly idea. We we actually need to do that now. Um, but yeah, she is a terrible villain because she's just evil for the sake of being evil. No principle operates this way, and so fuck that bad villain. Um, and yeah, like I mentioned earlier, Sai and Sai Twai, I'm like, okay, cool, we'll have her in this movie, and we'll probably have her developed a bit, and we'll, you know, we'll see differences between her and Equestria Twilight, and she's really not used all that much in this movie. She, um, she appears out of the blue, and essentially every single time, she whips out her goddamn magical Ghostbusters compass, which is, like, similar to what? What's the Ghostbusters trap called? Is there a specific name for that? Um, it's like a capture device. Uh, the the Luigi vacuum. Yes, yeah. 
Yeah, she whips but, out her poltergust well, 3000. I'll, yeah, <laughs> a poltergust. In the form of a compass. And she accidentally sucks up her magic. Rinse, repeat. No real development of her character ever than the fact she wants to go to this university where she can science. Science! Science, yeah. I am purple smart and I wish to science! And yeah, w- way to develop that character. Oh, Twilight likes science. I never would have guessed that, except we already knew that based off of her equestrian girl, or, you know, her fucking pony counterpart. She's just there, and we never learn much about her, which... That doesn't seem to be a strength of these movies, developing new characters. Like, Sunset Shimmer, that's one thing they get, they got right. They managed to develop her well, but... Moving to another thing that's really annoyed me about these movies, as much as I, I would say I, I'd give the series of Equestria Girls movies, like, a, a thumbs up so far. Like, not a strong recommendation. I'd be like, yeah, they're okay. But what the fuck ever happened to Flash Century? Really? I mean, he had a he had sass for oh, a no. second. What, what happened to Flash <laughs> Sentry is that they had him in the first movie, and all the bronies flipped their shit because they hated him so much, and then they were afraid to do anything else with him. Yeah, That's what happened to Flash Sentry. Perhaps, but if you're in this position in charge, you, you really shouldn't care about what they think. And I know they, they do, but... Like... Y- you can't just have this character introduce him and then, like, give him maybe, what, eight lines of dialogue combined between, like, the last two movies? That can't be that far off. Like, he's just thrown away, and he's meant to be, like, a love interest of Twilight and all that, and even the movie isn't even seeming to try for that anymore. It's like, oh, yeah, there's, there's a crush going on, and that's about it. It hasn't developed any, like, any fervor. Come on, can we at least develop the guy so, you know, bronies actually have a reason to possibly hate him or like him? No? Okay, guess we're not gonna do that. But, uh, yeah, between Science Twy and him, and even, like, the the pony counterpart, or the human counterparts of the ponies, we're not even really developed that much other than the fact, we, we already know, okay, we're the human counterparts of the ponies. We really never get that much beyond that about them, and it's just, I don't know, it's kind of disappointing. I don't feel like these movies, I know we're limited on time. Oh, but, but Greg, we had so many great moments of adding new things to their character, like mm-hmm. that time Pinky made the same joke she made in both of the other movies, uh... and then that other character from the other school made the same joke again. Man, so funny it's, and so developing. It's so original and different. But yeah, I I know, if we're limited on time for short movies, I get that. But I feel like, especially in this third movie, they don't use a they don't use their time wisely. Like they waste a lot of time doing stuff that's not necessary and could be used to developing characters more and developing the world around them. And they don't they don't seem to utilize that well enough. Um, what else about this movie ever been? I said, no- nothing really happens, it- and it's true. They they keep having sci twi poltergust people. Um, and then they keep going back to the girls, and it's like, oh, they're trying to figure out how to contain their magic, and nothing really happens pertaining to that until the end. Yeah. Eh. <laughs> And then, of course, there is the actual friendship games themselves. <laughs> and boy, they are, wow, really, really fucking underwhelming. So, as I mentioned, I timed it. Out of the 70 minutes that this movie goes on for, the friendship games take up nine. Three of those nine are a musical montage. That's... Wow, like, really? You named the entire movie after that? And uh, let's not forget, we see such riveting things, like, at first we're shown a math competition and cake baking, and birdhouse making. With John oh, Cena and the cake. <laughs> I mean, oh yeah, that's just, that's some riveting stuff right there. These friendship games, I'm so fired up seeing that, and then, oh. We follow that up with, um, 
Moto crop. What? Mo mo why are they on motorcycles? What? Oh. I'll save that for oh. Treebeard, but, uh... Oh. <laughs> why? Where are their card games? What kind of... Yeah. But, really, like, for high schools, they play... Why aren't you having, like, them compete in soccer and baseball and football and, te te you know, stuff normal high schools have for kids compete in? Motocross? Fucking motocross? I don't even think fucking modern day has motocross. No. And, like, <laughs> look, I can, okay, I can see the possibility of there being archery and rollerblading, but those are included over the other sports that are possibly out there, really? Like, uh, okay. But, uh, oh God, what else? What else? Yeah, friendship games are dumb. The ending. Uh... I had, <laughs> that happened. <laughs> yeah, it happened. Um, I I'm still confused as to why the magic turned her evil necessarily. Like, some people tried to explain it to me in the react comments that um, oh, she was using the power for her own self gain and she was overwhelmed and blah blah blah. But Twilight wasn't really like doing. Was she really using it for her own self gain? There, she was more like peer pressure. It seemed into like it she by was the doing it for the school. Yeah, like, and I really didn't understand that. And like, if you're gonna have that, at least like give some like exposition it, about it. Yeah. Like, explain why she turned into a friendship demon. God, I can't believe that's an actual thing. <laughs> um, but really, I am friendship demon. I. I, I don't get it. I just don't. And I feel like that's something that deserves some decent explanation here. Like, you can't just throw that in. Except you can, apparently, in this movie. Uh, and it, yeah, everything at the end is so rushed. Like, there's, like, no build-up to it. It just is like, oh, yeah, op open that uh, magic poltergust, whatever we're to call it, magic compass. And universe is torn apart for about two minutes. They turn in sunset turns into like this angelic thingy. Do we have an actual term for what she turned into? No. Fuck! I don't even know. A friendship thing. It's friendship Sifer. Yes. Friend Sifer. Friend Sifer. And then Twilight turns into a demon of a battle Twice. for like. 30 seconds and then go into this light pillar and everything's okay. Oh, okay. And, and then Sunset Shimmer turns into Tyrael. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but yeah, like, what was with the ending to this movie? Like, really rushed, not explained. I guess finally, uh, the stuff I did like in this movie. Uh, I thought the music was pretty good. Uh, Daniel Ingram and Stefan Andrews usually do a good job on the music, and I all around enjoy the music in this movie. I enjoyed the uh, Disney-esque villain song at the end. That was probably my favorite song of the entire movie. And uh, I, I think the, the song with Twilight of the School wasn't bad either. I, I liked that one too. Like, there's nothing... Oh, horrible in this movie just a lot of really whys like a lot of why this why that why didn't you explain this why is principal of asshole academy such a fucking bitch um i don't know maybe i'll remember more once you guys start talking but for me that that about wraps it up and i guess out of 10 this is a negative meh for me just the negative side of it i'll go with a four out of ten yeah. All right, TG. All right, yeah. Greg covered a almost lot. everything. <laughs> yeah, he covered a lot. Uh, <laughs> I, I agree on pretty much everything. I, I I'm usually pretty big on the music in like every show ever, but I don't know in this movie. I didn't really care about any of the music. It just. None of it stood out to me. Like, it wasn't, like, painful to listen to or anything, but... I don't know, all of it, I just heard it and then forgot about it. Like, the day after I watched the movie, uh, one of these guys was talking about the 
villain song yeah. at the end. That's the one that stuck. <laughs> I, I legitimately forgot that song existed. Like, that's how little it stuck with me. I was like, what villains? When is there a villain song in the movie? What? And, like, I had to fucking go back and, like, look and be like, oh, they sang here. Okay. So, yeah, I think... I think it could just be a side effect of the whole movie being really boring and blah and meh, so that I just I just couldn't remember anything at all. But, I don't know, it's... Yeah, I don't know, they really dropped the ball with this one. Like, the first one was decent, and, you know, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't amazing. The second one was really good. I think everyone kind of agrees that Rainbow Rocks was really good. And then this one just... uh, No. Like, I don't... I think everyone was hoping that after Rainbow Rocks they'd keep going and making them good, but... I think at the end of it, at the end of this uh, podcast, we'll talk about our opinion of the uh, series so far. Yeah. yeah. We'll just go I, I was going... Yeah, I was going to bring that up. Yeah. Yeah, Seems like so, a good second to- topic. Yeah, and then, um... God, what else happened in this movie? Yeah, yeah, like the, I said... You gotta think about it, huh? <laughs> yeah, like... Like I said before, when I interrupted Greg, like, fucking making the same stupid Pinkie Pie joke, like, three more times in this movie. It's not funny anymore. It honestly wasn't funny the first time. But, okay, sure. The fucking... Yeah, I don't know. Just everything in this movie was really uninteresting. And we, there's the whole fucking Twilight turning evil at the end for no reason. Because we need a villain, and it would be too intelligent to make it the person who's been villainous the whole movie. Like, why is the principal not the villain at the end? Like, why shove it off on Twilight? It's dumb. Is really dumb. Twilight hasn't ever shown like human Twilight never shows any flashes of being evil. Yeah, at like all. she's just curious <laughs> and she's trying to figure shit out and it's going wrong. Like she's very openly like, I don't know what's happening, please help. If anything, if she's confused, shouldn't the magic like overwhelm her to the point where she just can't control it? Like yeah, exactly. It, it shouldn't be like, oh, I'm an evil being now that can control all this dark magic. It should be like, I can't control this, shit's going crazy, help me. If yeah. Anything. But, yeah. It's... It's really ridiculous and stupid. Like, I don't understand what... I don't understand what even is. So, uh... Yeah, I... Yeah, okay, so what what the fuck was I saying? You were gonna give your score. (laughs) Oh, yeah, uh, it's like... I don't know, probably like a three... Tree beard. Oh, God, you're done? (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Okay, so uh, my thoughts, again, incredibly... Josh, man. Okay, I feel like I understand what kind of happened here, as far as, like... Because one of my biggest complaints is that the story seems so confused. It doesn't really seem to know what it wants to do, or rather, it feels like it's being... It's being shanghaied into something it doesn't want to be. Like... (laughs) The Friendship Games just feels like a transparent fucking corporate mandate. Like, it has to be about, like, these... Like, fucking Nerf Rebel knockoff shit. What was big it, two years ago? The, oh, the Hunger Games? Oh, here, we'll make the name a, a parody of that and add archery. There, done. Kids will love it. The, the kids will love this shit. Also, motorcycles. <laughs> oh, I'll get to the motorcycles. <laughs> okay, so, the fucking... It, felt, it really felt like Josh Haber wanted to write the twilight sparkle x files more than she then he wanted to write the 
write the friendship games. It really does show, especially given how much time is spent on the games themselves. And a lot of this episode really... Fe- episode, God. I mean, this movie, but the way that I made that mistake is so telling because... It feels like a really meh episode, doesn't it? It feels like a really long episode of the show. Mm-hmm. And one of the less good ones. Uh very season five esque. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really matches up with season five so far. Because the Twilight Sparkle X Files and the Crosstown School X games were kind of competing with each other, neither of them got enough time to be developed as a story, and the characters never really nothing was really advanced or accomplished other than the setup for a spin off show. And, uh, yeah, the, a lot of the, how this works is really weird. Like, how is Twilight able to contain the magics? Is it because of science? That's about the explanation that we get. She can contain the magics because science. Science! Science! It's good enough, apparently. <laughs> and... Yeah, I'll talk about this more when we talk about Equestria Girls in general, but the way magic works in the human universe is so fucking confusing. Yeah, they never bother to explain it at all. Yeah. And that's a problem. It is a huge problem because it strains the credibility of most of the, most of the story. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, the, the principal being two-dimensionally evil... We we made the jokes about that. She might as well be Principal Palpatine. Good. Principal Palpitations. <laughs> Shoots out Force Lightning. <laughs> Shoots out Force Defibrillator. Friendship Lightning. <laughs> <laughs> Let the friendship flow through you. I can feel your friff. God, yeah, the fucking... <laughs> Yeah, the principal being two-dimensionally evil, some of the voices felt really wonky. And the friendship games themselves were just inconsequential. They did not fucking matter. Which is really weird because... Motocross! (laughs) Motocross! Why motocross? It's like... I... The thing is... Okay, archery... I can buy that. Y- you know? Bows, yeah, like there, there are is, schools that have there that. Are school, there are schools that do that, plus it's fairly affordable to get the equipment. So, okay, archery, I can buy it. Roller derby, it's weird. Odd choice. <laughs> It's weird, but I can conceivably see teenagers having had a few years of experience with roller skating, enough for them to be able to do it competitively. And then there's the cake baking and the decathlon or the methathlon or whatever the fuck oh, it is. Yeah. I mean, all, the, all that stuff is believable. In fact, that's that believable. Stuff, that stuff is probably the most believable because before, that can actually it. happen in a Before we get to the, the complaint we're about to get to, here's the thing I remembered that I wanted to ask. Why, why have Twilight compete? Like, she's the, the smartest I... student at the school, but... 90% of this competition is physical. Why yeah. make her compete? Oh She's my. clearly not going to win it for your school. Oh my god, now it makes less sense. Yeah, no, like, it's all... It's all, like, physical shit. Like, we didn't get to see all the other games, but the first event was Academic Decathlon. That covers all of the non-physical things. I mean, I guess maybe the principal figured, okay, as long as she comes in and does a great job on that, we can cover her ass or the rest of it, so it, we might as well have I guess, her. Yes, but, but, like, she's blackmailing her to compete, so you'd think yeah. she'd serve for everything. Like, it's really dumb. Mm. Yeah, the fucking... It, and then... Motorcross! Okay, first off, Prep school or not, 
how are you going to afford to put together all the things necessary to have a motocross team? You need to have bikes. You need to have a track that you can alter. Not only bikes, customized bikes. Oh, I'm getting to that. (laughs) You have to have the fucking bikes and... Well, yeah, even the fact that fucking Canterlot High is participating in this, it's kind of highly suggested that they're a public school. So it's like, okay, there's no way in hell the government's paying for this. (laughs) So, I mean, it's also claimed that they're a high school, even though they clearly have like, middle or elementary schoolers are running We'll get to that when we talk about the series at large, because that's another yeah. thing that makes no fucking sense. Ah, oh, the... F- what else? Oh, what else about motocross? Okay. And even assuming... Assume for a moment that these schools could host a motocross meet, what teenager would have a the funds, B, the certification, and C, the practice to have a motorcycle and be able to ride a motorcycle competitively. How? Like, I knew one guy in high school that had an ATV. And let me tell you, my high school did not have an ATV team. It's just, what the... Fuck. <laughs> the motocross thing just makes zero sense, and it's so fucking transparent what it's th- that it's there to sell toys. And believe me, I understand that... I understand that that's whole, Hasbro's whole deal, that they're in it to sell toys, but come on! <laughs> you can't... You can't make it that transparent, otherwise it's like... You strain credibility. Nobody's invested in it because they're like, "It's this is, this is a toy commercial. There is no other reason this is happening. It's, oy. And then we get to the end where Sunset becomes the Archangel of Friendship. And then we have Twilight become the nerd glasses Raven Queen of I Have Glowy Glasses. And of peer pressure, and then the, and then the, we have like cameo of like, hey, I am Mother Horse Twilight, but guess I don't need to be here anymore. <laughs> Bye, guys. Got that shit covered. Yeah this this movie, this movie's biggest problem is that it didn't seem to know what it wanted to do. It couldn't really focus on anything, and it didn't really have a good sense of scale. And it doesn't seem to be grounded in any semblance of rea- in any iteration of reality, even the reality know. that it establishes. It's just balls to the wall, fucking idiotic. I I've got to give it fucking. Fucking two. Two wow. out of ten. I can't believe it's, I gave it the highest score. <laughs> it's just... I I mean, no, it was just still not all that high. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't do... It doesn't get anywhere near what it's supposed to do. Yeah. It, yeah, it's... And, uh, yeah, I, I would hold that it's probably the weakest movie in the series. Which brings us to our next discussion. Yes, our next discussion. Guys, would you let's discuss our opinions on the Equestria Girls movies at large. Okay. So uh, Greg, why don't you start off? Okay, um a brief observation before I dive into all the movies, something I forgot to bring up, but it's really always bugged me about these movies. Holy shit, is everyone oblivious in this universe to everything going on about around them? Like, (laughs) oh my goodness, in this movie especially, my god. Like, there is a giant plant monster attacking the contestants of this motocross competition, and (laughs) nobody cares! There's nothing about that sentence that makes sense. (laughs) No, no. Yeah, definitely 
not making any <laughs> sense. But I, nobody cares. Really? They don't even ever show oh, up a crowd giant. reacting to this. The principals of the schools don't care. The contestants seem to just take it, you know, they, they take it pretty well that they're being attacked by giant plant monsters trying to eat them. We're like, oh, better get to that fucking finish line. Nothing else matters in this fucking scenario. I mean, we've already ice picked their brains. <laughs> Not like they're going to be missed if they're eaten by plant monsters. <laughs> right. But I mean, really. You would think there'd be some fucking emotion or some sense of, holy <laughs> shit, I'm being attacked by a giant plant monster fucking run. <laughs> no. No. Does does that not happen to you every day? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what kind of life you're living, TG. But, uh... <laughs> and then, even... That's just one example. There's the fucking portal d- during the, uh, like, the, the opening ceremonies that o- opens underneath the bleachers... No one seems to notice that, even despite the fact that Pinky just went, like, full pony. You'd think someone would look around to look at that and see the magic being sucked out of her. No, n- nobody. Apparently, they're all too focused on dancing or whatever the fuck you would call that. Ugh. Like... I mean, no, nobody noticed that Pinky's, like, crashing hard on yeah. whatever fucking hangover ray she got hit with. Yeah, it's it, just Pinky. She got high as shit. Fluttershy that. gets the fucking magic sucked out of her outside of a fucking school, like in the open. Nobody notices that. Like during the competition, I think is it Applejack that gets her friendship sucked out of her? Nobody notices that. Like y- you would think at some point. Like, the other people in the school would, like, notice that and, like, try to point stuff out and try to be helpful? No. Competition is apparently all that fucking matters. The nine minutes of competition that we see. Oh, it's the most important (laughs) nine minutes of the... No, it's not. (laughs) No. (sighs) Like, and then, to to expand the point further, in this movie we learn that apparently... Nobody outside of the school has taken notice of these events. Nobody knows that these girls turn into magical pony people. Nobody knows about the sirens or the giant demon pony thing. Nope, don't know about that. Really now. They have social media. And even if they didn't, you would think someone... Outside of these two schools would notice these things and be like, huh. What the fuck is going on? Yeah, that might be worth a bit of investigation, but no. Apparently not. Government? No. We don't care about magic or any... No. That'd be silly. Mm. We wouldn't want to investigate that. But police? Oh, this this school was practically fucking destroyed out front. Ah, whatever. Ah. Let 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 them oh, deal with that. Teenagers I'm... destroying the world with their magical superpowers and whatnot. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Sounds nothing. like a normal Tuesday. And what about the parents of these kids? Like we we never see any. But they we don't do see exist. Some They're figures. all dead. <laughs> but there's everyone's this... dead. There's everyone's this... an orphan. <laughs> There's this giant battle of the bands in the second movie where these giant siren monsters are clearly seen in the open, and this is not hosted at the school. This seems to be, like, a town-wide event. Like, I guarantee you there's some people from outside of the high school that would go to this. Not notice at all. Nope. Mm-mm. Nope. What? Everyone's dead. I know it's a cartoon and all, and maybe I'm looking too much into this. In fact, I probably am, but... I cannot believe the fact that nobody in this universe has noticed the events that have transpired over these three movies. That is... insane. But yeah, now that my rant on, uh, fucking how oblivious everyone in this universe is is over, um, the movies themselves. First movie, it's harmless, really. It's, it's okay, it's meh in the good way, like... I know that sounds odd to say, but essentially, like, I would say it's an okay episode of a show. That's how it, what it, that's what I would compare it to. It's a long, okay episode of a show. Um, 
the failures of a first movie might simply be the amount of holes there are when you start thinking about it too much. How, how does Sunset Shimmer know that Twilight is a princess, and why does why does she know all this stuff about her, even though she's apparently been in the human dimension for what the past seemingly four years? How how often does a mirror open in the first movie? I think they said three or four years. Something, something like that. measured in moons. Something. something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's remember. like I don't know. It's a dumb thing, and they never explain how it works. It seems like it's a couple of years. And again, there's several plot holes when you start thinking about why is the mirror in the Crystal Empire? You know, the the place that just appeared a couple months back. Yeah, if it's in the Crystal Empire, how did Sunset Shimmer get away? Right. <laughs> and then, if you start thinking about the human universe, what's with these ages? How does this make any sense? And then, I, I don't know. When you start thinking about things too much in the first movie, it kind of ruins it. But, if you don't, it is an okay movie. Um... Second movie is definitely the strongest of the series. Um, villains are quite entertaining. The music is the best of the series, and yeah, it it feels like there's an actual conflict going on, and you're you get invested in it. Even though it's a silly battle of the bands premise, you're still interested enough to be in you know care a bit, and it's it's a fun movie. Like that would score as a good good episode of the series in comparison as opposed to meh for the first one. Um, what else about Rainbow Rocks did I really, really like? I'm trying to remember. I don't know, maybe once you guys talk about it more, about the second movie, it'll click for me. But uh, I like the second movie. And uh, the third movie, already talked about it a lot. It's just, eh. I really, it's it's really meh. Really forgettable. Not a lot happens. Music is okay for me. Other than that, eh whatever um serious as a whole it's okay um i remember originally when this series was announced people flip for shit oh this is gonna be the end of mlp as we know it this is where it goes downhill it's all over blah 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 that definitely hasn't been the case it's been pretty much harmless to the uh friendship is magic series it's just kind of there <laughs> and uh yeah i I can't really bash the series too much, but at the same time, for okay, it's an okay series of movies so far. Curious to see where they go from here. All right, so uh, TG, your opinions. Uh, okay, so I, like Greg said, the first one's really like it's. There's nothing too bad about it, but. I forgot to it's briefly not like mention, not, not yeah. to cut in quick again, but I did like the first movie more than the third movie. I just wanted oh, to say that. Oh, definitely. Yeah, just in case that wasn't, you know, clear. But yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Well, no. So, the, the first one's, you know, mostly harmless. Uh, but it's it's decent enough. It It did well enough, and it was good enough to, you know, deserve a second one. Uh, it, you know, there, there are things, you know, like Flash Sentry being fucking cardboard, uh, and all the other, like, dumb shit in the first one that we've already talked about, but, but you know, it was decent, and, uh, the music in that one was really good, too. Like, I, I really liked all the music in the first movie. Uh, then... The second movie was by far the best, uh, because it was, uh, it was just really, really good. Like, it, and it, it's kind of hard to remember what we liked about it. I just remember liking it. I don't think I've watched yeah, it like in over all a year, the, but... Because <laughs> that, one, that one was really heavily music-focused, too. But yeah, like, and all the music, music is great. fucking phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Like... Like, even the songs that are really just, like, throwaway songs are really good. Like, my favorite song in that movie is Trixie's fucking song. And that's, like, 
15 seconds of movie, and it's really good. <laughs> but, uh, then, um, yeah, the, the sirens were really good villains. Uh, the whole thing was good. Like, the one downside of the second movie was there. I really wish they didn't bring Twilight back. Like, this is the thing we, we always right. say. These movies would be better if they would leave out Twilight. We don't need her. We have Sunset. Yeah, Sunset She's was, taking the role of Twilight. She was strong enough to leave the entire second movie on her own. Twilight did not need to be there, and she just really kind of felt tacked on Yeah. at the end of the day. It's really dumb, and I really wish they would stop doing it. Like, it's... I don't know. Just she doesn't need to be in there. Just let sunset run shit. Uh, and then, but, but besides that, like, the movie was really good. Like, I didn't just enjoy it as like a horse movie. It was just like an actually good movie. Like, I, I enjoyed it a lot. And then uh, this fucking one came out and just kind of threw out everything good about the last one and decided to be awful. Like, yeah, I, I don't... I don't even know what to say about it. It's just not good. Yeah, I... But yeah, that, that pretty much covers my uh, thoughts about the, this series. The first one was whatever, the second one was really good, and the third one is really terrible. Alright, so, uh, Scott, since you're here. <laughs> yeah, give your just general thoughts on the Equestria Girls series, movies one for free. Um, one, I, I was okay with one. It set the groundwork. Two was amazing. I loved all the songs from two. Three was eh, as in awful. <laughs> um, you probably covered everything. Probably the motocross, all the things wrong with that, right? There's a motocross. The principal blackmailing twilight uh shining armor sounding like a douche and so on actually did not bring that up but yeah that was weird why was his voice different it was just odd and out of place and then how everyone in the school's a jackass asshole academy yes yeah asshole academy <laughs> uh oh yeah and then there's then sensei becoming the apostle of friendship or I guess Angel of Friendship, if which is probably what Treebeer calls her, because Diablos. <laughs> Diablos. Uh, uh. Anyway, three was three was shit. I give it shit out of poop. That's not quantifiable. <laughs> Five. Out of uh, ten. Sorry. We're doing out of ten. All right. Uh, three. Three out of ten. Yes. Yeah, that's right in the middle of us. Wait, really? Wow. Yeah, we we gave it. Oh God, we gave it a two, a three, and a four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, any other thoughts on the series in general? It has potential. It has potential. How so? I mean, it could have potentially been a really good series. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> what do you? Where do you think it'll go from here? Like, what do you think about future potential? Um, I mean, well, I'm more curious about the whole Twilight reacting to herself thing. That's kind of hilarious. Gag at the end. Mm -hmm. And then is, is that quite never going to happen again? Is it going to be its own series with this world's Twilight, which would be dumb because Sunset was supposed to replace her? You need to tack on that Twilight to sell toys. How toyetic can you get? Except they already have that Twilight. Except they already have Equestria Girls Twilight. Now they have another Twilight to sell. Oh no. They have Dirty Twilight. Oh no. Or purple Smart Science Twilight. <laughs> yes. Or Ghostbusters Twilight. Who or somehow managed to succeed where the sirens failed. Mm. By complete accident. Anyway, yeah, I'm, I've been rambling on enough. A bird. All right. So, uh, Equestria Girls in general. I actually went and rewatched the movies a little bit ago. So, uh, number one. After I rewatched it, uh, 
Sunset was kind of a Sunset was kind of a two dimensional bitch, and not a lot about her made much sense. Like, seeing Twilight try to do who men things was pretty interesting. It, it it was pretty funny at times, but uh, again, Sunset was kind of a two dimensionally douchey douchebag. And her turnaround felt really weird in the first movie to me. Like, the, well, the I mean, thing it's that, the magic rainbow shit. I mean, when when fucking Celestia said like, <laughs> "Oh well, uh, you you show that it's not by forcing others to bow to you, but by inspiring others to stand with you." I'm like, "But that's exactly what she did. She forced Sunset to bow before her. Kneel <laughs> before me. Kneel." Neil before Zod. Why, well, yes, Neil is in front of Zod in line. But anyway, uh, and the the thing that I really don't what li- that I really don't like was the element of harmony somehow turning Sunset Shimmer into a demon. Because people keep trying to tell me that oh, it's because she's like evil and shit, and you use an element of harmony, and you're evil, it makes it amplifies evil, except. The elements of harmony shouldn't do jack shit without the others being present. N- none, no one of them should ever work without the others. That's like one of the few things that is established canon with them. But the elements are inside them, pretty well, weird. So okay. It's okay. Ma- well, except the magic appearance has a mind Okay, of its own. then... Then why is the person who is the unfriendliest friend friend of all... Why is she able to use it? Why does it turn her into the a world demon? Will never know. How the fuck does magic even begin to work in this universe? She really, we don't know. Exactly. It's never really explored and it's never really explained. It's her mantra. And God. Damn. Well, even in the third movie, they finally, like, seem to be building up the explanation behind it. And at the end, it's just kind of for an out for, oh, yeah, it's, it's, magic is all based around, like, being yourself and some bullshit like that. That's, that is such. Then why can't I conjure magical friendship beams when I'm with Greg and TG and Scott and Because you're missing an element of harmony. Fuck you. (laughs) You need a Chaos Emerald, dude. (laughs) Or a Magical MacGuffin first. Oh, no, no. we need to find us a Magical MacGuffin so we can shoot magic and shit. And then there's the whole, like, oh, our magic is changing thing. Why did that happen? Why did... Yeah, why did it change from, oh, it it appears when we play musical instruments only to, oh, it just appears all the time. How? Why? What? One. How is it changing? (laughs) Two, what is it changing? Two, three, what was it even changing from? Probably being from them playing music to them, to actually being attuned to their element, I guess. We're ourselves when we play music. That's a good enough explanation. But not really. No, it's not. (laughs) It's not, because that's a lot of these explanations are stuff that people have to headcanon up. And headcanon's just a fancy word for bullshit. (laughs) Fucking, yeah, magic doesn't make any sense in this series. I mean, it barely makes any sense in Fim, in the main series. At least we have a general basis for it. We do have a general, it's grounded in something. Yeah. Yeah. Here it's just all the fuck over the place. Well, tribute, the elements of harmony kind of play by their own rules, which we don't even know what those rules are. Well, we do know what two of them are. Well, all the people who represent the elements must be present. Two, all the elements themselves must be present. Th- those are the rules. The physical elements themselves. Oh, and kind of a third rule. The people who are using the elements must be feeling friendly friendshipness in order for them well, to work. And why do they turn into pony things? Like, what? Our really? Po- Think our about that. That just doesn't... like are ponies just the friendship master race? Yeah, that's and all, all things you can that really become conclude. friendly eventually become pony. 
Like, it's so weird, I and mean, then, okay, so they get wings, but not horns, and obviously that's just because of aesthetics, but at the same time, there should be, like, an actual in-world, or in-universe explanation for that, but doesn't exist. Why are they even growing ears and wings? <laughs> well, I mean, when they use their magical friendship powers, Sunset grew a horn, Twilight grew a horn. Yeah, but she, Sunset grew, like, a Tyrael horn. Anterior yeah, wings. it ain't a pony horn. It's Anterior a... wings. Mm. She's fucking Tyrael is what I'm saying. Or maybe Imperious, because Imperious had like the yellow shit, but that's beside the point. <laughs> then it tur- and then it turns like the Raven Twilight into Raven finally. Because I don't know, magic is wacky that way. <laughs> this is magic on Earth rules. Which we Which, don't know what those yeah. fucking rules are. I mean, the one time it seemed to make the most sense was with the sirens. Because the sirens are kind of like the Wendigos in that they draw power from a specific source. Which would exist on Earth. And it would be amplified by the presence of equestrian magic. So, okay. I can buy that. They, expo- they at least explained how they work and what they do. Mm-hmm. And the thing that really killed me with the first movie is when Sunset Shimmer's like, whoa, what? Don't you know what happens when an element of harmony enters an alternate world? I'm like, neither does the audience. I sure would like to know. Do you even know? I don't think anyone does. Well, I mean, apparently she did. She figured she turned to a demon thing. How? (laughs) I don't... I mean, has this happened before? Has there been research Well, I mean, it's Celestia knew shit would happen like that's why she fucking made twilight go she was like the element of harmony cannot be in a place with no magic that's not a good don't let that happen but that's really we general. never real- like that's i mean you know what i can draw off of that though element of harmony can't be in a place without magic because it'll be useless and it won't no, be where then, we need it. No, but she's like, it's dangerous. She explicitly says that it's dangerous. For the other how? world, yeah. What she doesn't do? say how, but she does explicitly say, say that it's dangerous. And, well, we got shown how. It turns people. It can turn people into fucking demons. How and why? <laughs> and if you're going to send Twilight after it, why not tell her that so that she's prepared for that? Yeah, and you can't even say, oh, it'll ruin the surprise. No, it builds tension. Fuck you. Hitchcock called it suspense. I really hate how they utilize magic in these movies. Because it's so transparently deus ex machina thing to make plot go bullshit. And they don't even, half the time, they don't even, they have a throwaway line and they count that as an explanation. If even that. Ah. Uh. But yeah, the first first movie had that problem. Second movie was less problematic because it had magical it had magical mechanics that made sense and it had villains that seemed to have more than just being douchebags as dimensions. They they want they got to eat. That's that's their motivation. <laughs> they feed on misery. They got they got to eat. They they feed on misery, so they spread misery. Yeah. They gotta eat. Okay, I can buy that. That's a great. That that's as good a motivation as any. <laughs> and then the third one, which we just talked about, is so confusing because I don't even think it knows what it wants to do. So yeah, uh, equestrian girls in general. Now that I really, st- again, like Greg said, once you start thinking about it, it, it they're really it, silly. It, <laughs> they're really absurd. At, at best, it's absurd. At worst, it's just atrociously nonsensical. Like, I didn't hate... Like, the first time I watched the first movie, I'm like, is that it? <laughs> and then I, I watched the th- third movie, I had, like, about the same reaction. Is that it? <laughs> and that's kind of my opinion on Equestria Girls as a series in general. Is, is that it? Really? It's harmless, but it's not anything super special it's, ever than the second it, one, which was good. I like, mean, the second one was okay, but it's like, 
this series didn't even need to exist. No, it's blatantly for toys. Well, actually, something that was said in a panel before that the only reason the Equestria Girls movies ever came out was because of the fandom. That they had the idea that the fandom really wanted to see this stuff. So they made the first movie and they kind of made a toy line around it. So it's like, okay, and then the next few are like, okay, these are these are like toy shills. Well, Def- I think like I kind of agree that it exists because of a fandom, because the fandom got the series so far and got it got it to the point where the show was extended. But let's be real, it also yeah, it definitely has to deal with the whole Monster High craze. I mean, they modeled it exactly after Monster High. Yeah. So I mean I kind of buy that explanation, but at the same time, it's not a full explanation in the slightest. It's just more yeah. It's just more saying, okay, yeah, you guys really liked ponies, and it gave us a chance to extend the series, so we made this because we could for toys. That's what happened. Which is, and it, you know, it's funny. I Just on the side, I, I was watching the latest episode of Gravity Falls, and a toy commercial came on for uh, Monster High. And funny enough... We're now turning their characters into horses. Wait, they are? Yes. It has come full circle. <laughs> My God. They, so in response to Hasbro copying Monster High with Equestria Girls, they have created their own toy line of Monster High copying My Little Pony. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> toys are weird, but the business of toys toy is industry quite interesting. Is fucking yeah, <laughs> and so, pretty funny, just thought I'd point that out. But, um, I forgot to add, um, I was gonna bring something up, goddammit, did I really forget? No, I, I remember. Um, I really, I'm really disappointed they've never fleshed out, like, or, they've never shown the villains from Equestria in the human universe. Oh, you, Discord and, as a professor. Yeah, that would be so interesting. I I feel like that has a ton of potential, and they haven't touched on it. Like, what is the human equivalent of Chrysalis? What is her job? What does she do? I would love to see that. I mean, God, there's so much potential. I was there. hoping that she would be the villain here so in the I. third movie. Yeah, I, I was also hoping that. No, I mean, hell, even. I'd even like to see human Sombra as shitty and useless of a character as he was. Like, still curious. Still would love to see what he's up to in the human universe. He teaches geology, Greg. Yeah, something involving creating crystals. He He's a meth dealer. <laughs> Crystal. Breaking no, no, he was a geology teacher turned meth dealer. There you go. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. Sombra White. But, again, there's so much potential there. Trixie, we gotta cook! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the great and powerful Trixie shall cook meth! With science, With bitch! Science. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, I've had so much potential, and that's not touched on, and I'm really disappointed. Like, maybe they'll get to that eventually. I hope they do. But no. They'd rather focus on the Friff games and bullshit yeah and such a waste of time so anyways yeah, do that this... show creators give us the villains <laughs> i want <laughs> i mean the fuck yeah equestria girls is that it that's i mean there's going to be a spin-off series and i really don't know what to expect from it it, it feels like the staff has a far better grasp on how to do a TV series than they do on a movie. You know, after after the second movie, I I was like okay with it being having a series, and I was like this could be decent. Now I'm just pretty sure it's gonna be awful because, like, after the second movie, it was really kind of perfect for it to be the main six with Sunset instead of Twilight. Now they have new Twilight and it's dumb and there's no reason for it. Like, I just... It's it's all for toys. Yeah. But, you know. It's, it's Those Budacross toys, Greg. I totally want them. 
Let's all buy them, us. except not. Oh, Let's God. Not. Why does that exist? <laughs> but yeah, um... Anything else to add, or have we bashed on this series I enough? Think the, I think we so, but... <laughs> Alright, that fucking Equestria Grills, it happened. I feel like it'll be, I feel like this series will be stronger because, again, this staff seems to have a far better grasp on how to run a TV show than they do movies because the, uh, these movies are very, very meh. I mean, we haven't got confirmation yet, but it's a thing, but it sure seems like it. They said it. If they do, like, if they do... I would believe it's better than the. It'd be better than the movies. Mm. Hell, that '90s Godzilla animated series <sighs> is better than the '90s Godzilla movie. <laughs> I mean, at least with a TV series, we'd finally. I would hope the development of Brad. And well, yeah. Some because, of the uh, other characters. God, I even I forgot he existed when I was talking. <laughs> it's but sad. I, that's because, so telling. Yeah, it's it's very telling. But, yeah, with a TV series, they would finally be able to have all the time they need to develop these characters beyond the fact that they're just, oh, they, they have pony, they're the human counterparts of their ponies. That, that's it. They should get have some more of a character back. than that. Get some time to figure out, like, how the fucking cute pony world works. Right. So, yeah, if a TV series came around, they could definitely improve my opinion of Equestria Girls, if they do it right. If it comes out, we'll definitely be covering it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. (laughs) And uh, until that day, we've been hoof-hearted. We talked about Horse Women 3, the horse womening, and we'll catch you all later. Welcome, young Skywalker. I have been expecting you. Guards, leave us.